Example 170. The following table gives human heights, or male human heights, and shoe sizes. Find both r and r squared. Okay, so we have a table and it gives us heights for men and it gives us their shoe sizes. What we want to do first when we want to calculate r and r squared is we want to come up with those sum of squared values. We've done that so many times that I've gone ahead and done it for us here so we don't have to spend our time doing that. So we're going to do SSXY, SSXX, and SSYY. Now I've already worked that out for us using our standard formulas that we've always used in the previous sections. So when you work that out, you get the following values. All right, the last one is 10.7. So those three values we're going to use to solve the rest of the problem. Now, I'm going to do R first. R, remember, is just a simple formula. The formula is the mixed term on top of a fraction that's comprised of a denominator that has SSXX under a square root multiplied by SSYY under that same square root, right? Okay, so when we plug those numbers in for this particular problem, we come up with the answer 28. Now let's pause here for a minute and just remind ourselves that when this mixed term xy is positive, r is going to be positive, right? Okay, and then we plug in the rest of the numbers here, 126 times 10.7. Okay, now from there what you're going to do is simply divide these two numbers, right? So 28 divided by the square root of, and that will be 126 times 10.7. Close up your parentheses in the bottom. When we do the division, we end up with 0 0.763. 0 0.763. So 0 0.763. Okay, so with that being our R value, we could jump right to R squared now if we wanted to. We could simply just square that value. Um, we could do it that way, that is the easier way to do it. However, I don't want to do it that way because in some problems you may not uh, be given you know, the information that we're given here and we may not be able to derive these quantities fully. A professor could leave out one or two to make it harder on you and make it so that you can't just square the R value. So what I want to do then is to show the actual formula for R squared if you don't use the simple idea of squaring R. So R squared as a formula is very simple as well, but it involves this guy, SSYY minus SSE divided by, finally, SSYY. So basically, let's look at what this formula is doing. It'll help us understand what R squared is. It's taking the sum of squared for the Y values, so the variation that's present in the Y values, the response variable, right? So it's looking at the variation in shoe sizes in this case, and from there, it's actually subtracting off the error, the sum of square for errors. So the sum of square for errors is like the um, unexplained variation, right? Unexplained variation. And then we divide by the total variation in the response variable again. So if you think about what's going to happen here, if you take the total variation in the response variable and you subtract off the unexplained variation, what's left is the explained variation. So essentially, the variation that's due to the predictor variable x and that will be divided by the total variation again. So you essentially get the percentage or proportion of variation in the response variable that can be explained by the predictor variable x. So if you didn't understand what I said there, you might want to read through the notes. But essentially it's going to tell us you know, how, how good our model is at uh, explaining why, basically. Is our model very good at it? If it is, it will have a very high value, something close to 1. If it's not so great, it will have a much lower value. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the work here. Now, as I mentioned, you know, you could be given, for example, SSYY, and you could be given the mixed term SSXY, and that would be enough for you to fill in this formula. So at that point, you know, oh, they'd have to also give you the slope, but the point is, is that you wouldn't necessarily have to be given this SSXX value, which would then prevent you from forming R. So that's why I mentioned you want to know this formula. In this particular case, we could have just squared the R, but you know, without, uh, without the SSXX, if that was hidden from us and they instead gave us the slope, they would force us to use this formula. So it's better to know how to do it both ways. So with this formula, we have SSYY, so that's easy. The question is, how do you get this SSE thing? Well, SSE, if you remember, was basically made up of SSYY and then the slope estimator beta 1 hat 
times the mixed term SSXY. So if they were to give us the slope, we could then fill in this formula with just SSYY and SSXY, and they wouldn't have to give us SSXX, which would prevent us from getting R and just squaring it. Okay, so SSYY is 10.7 minus the slope. I'm just going to fill in the slope right here. So remember, the slope is a ratio. It's the ratio between the mixed term, which would be 28 here, and the x term, which is 126. So from there, we'll be left with SSXY, which is then 28. Okay. By the way, if you know, of course, that your mixed term is SSXY, um, you could actually figure out what SSXX is if they give you the slope because you know how it's formed. But that, that's a separate thing. It would probably not be worth the trouble to do it that way. But I did say you wouldn't be able to get R, but you actually would be able to. Although that wouldn't be the most efficient way to do the problem. So either way, from here we're going to say 10.7 minus 28 squared over 126. So 10.7 minus 28 squared, right? Minus 28 squared divided by 126. So 126. All right, when we're done, we get the answer 4.47 repeating, it looks like, right? So just a bunch of sevens going on and on forever. All right, now, once we have SSE, then we plug that in to finish up the problem. So we're going to have the y sum of squares, which is 10.7. We're going to subtract off the 4.47 repeating, and we're going to divide it by 10.7. Let's see what that ultimately gives us for our squared value. So we'll have 10.7, 10.7, minus the quantity we just found. I have that in my calculator still, so I'll just do minus the answer. And then I'll divide that by 10.7. So I get 6.2 repeated divided by 10.7. And when I'm done with that, I get finally the answer 0 0.582. 0 0.582. Okay, so what this explain, how you explain this then is to say that um, the x variable that we introduced, the x variable that's designed to help predict y, that x variable explains 58% of the variation that's present in the response variable. So in other words, if you look at a person's height and take that into consideration, that will explain roughly 58% of the variation you see in the shoe sizes between men. And so it's a, you know, a decent amount of explanation provided by one simple variable, right? So 58% of the variation here can be attributed to differences in the heights. That's excellent. So, well, not excellent, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty solid R-squared value. Um, it could be higher, but it's, it's not that high. All right, finally, last thing I want to mention is, of course, if we had squared R like we talked about before, we would get the same value. So remember, R is 0.763. That's a little rounded, of course, but if we square it, we see that we get... 0.582 to three decimal places, which of course is the same answer as r squared. Likewise, if you have r squared, you could just take the square root of it and you would end up getting r, but a little word of caution here, square rooting r squared gives you r, but it gives you r's absolute value. It'll always give you a positive because you took the square root of a positive number. If this r had been negative, when you squared it, you would still get the same r squared value. So we're unable to know the sign of r just by taking the square root of r squared. However, if they tell you what the SSXY is, you can tell if that's positive, then R is positive. Likewise, if the slope is positive, then R is positive. So those two things are clues to the sign of R if they provide you with R squared and ask you to find R from there. All right, and then, as I mentioned, you could have just squared this number, but we went ahead and showed how to use the formula to do it, just so that we have both methods. Anyone can square an R to get an R squared. If you understand the formula for R squared, you could get it directly without having to calculate R first. Or, of course, you know, if somehow they try to make your life difficult and give you only certain bits of information, then from there you can use this formula to provide R squared. All right, and that's it.